Linda Yellen, Barnard Class of 1969. In the 50 intervening years, you have inspired and entertained, shared your talents and savvy as a director, writer, producer with us all. Sophomore year at Barnard, you created your first film, a short entitled Prospera, which won third prize in the New York Film Festival. Senior year, you made a feature film on the 1968 Columbia riots and earned a prestigious job at Cinema 5 Films. And while still a student, you taught the first film courses at Barnard, one on Italian film and another called Artists of Film. From there, you have worked to become one of the industry's most successful women, making 26 films, including two of television's highest rated movies, Playing for Time, starring Vanessa Redgrave, and The Royal Romance of Charles and Diana with Olivia de Havilland and Ray Milland. You have won numerous awards, including two Peabody's, seven Enemies, one Luminous, one Silver Nymph, and two Christophers, and your work has been screened at the most important film festivals, Cannes, Sundance, Toronto, and more. You were selected to be part of the Executive Council of the Writers Guild of America. You were the youngest woman director admitted to the Directors Guild of America. You have worked with great greats as Arthur Miller, Tennessee Williams, Anthony Hopkins, Diane Keaton, Elizabeth Taylor, Liza Minnelli, Dennis Hopper, William Hurt, the list goes on. And you never tire. You are currently working on three films at once, Fluidity, which will be released this summer. And we are grateful to you as you've always opened your doors to college interns from Barnard and always been there to give a student a piece of advice. Linda, we are thrilled to honor your inspiring perspective, your exciting career, and your devotion to Barnard with the 2019 Women of Achievement Award. You are a true source of pride for the college. I nearly flunked the admissions interview. But my mother was in the waiting room, saved the day as she had done so many times in my life. Uh, when the admissions officer came out, my mother stood up and convinced her that I would fit in well here. <laughs> the first day of classes, Professor Kate Stimson, remember her, said that the knowledge we learned here would be a treasure and force us to have an eternal quest for the truth. That same day, Professor Ken James of the Drama Department quoted Oscar Wilde and said, give a man a mask and he'll show you the truth. I think for my mask, my medium of film, I've countless times tried to explore the human condition and give audiences kernels of truth entertain, to inform, to edify. Now, can you go with me just a few moments back in time to my first time I walked through those gates as a student? The mission was $1,800 a year. <laughs> no men were allowed in the dorms unless they entered a dorm room and there was a book in the dorm room. 
But clever Warner girls use matchbooks. <laughs> and the greatest new invention is the answering machine. The first person I knew to have one is with us tonight, David Ammer. Hi, David. All my Warner buddies and I used to call his outgoing message all the time just to hear it and then hang up and before he heard his game. <laughs> so, David, I'm coming clean. All those hang ups, they're from you. But life here wasn't all just fun and games. Uh, the Vietnam War was raging. And it led to our Columbia protests, which led to the Columbia riots, which led, ironically, to my first film, which was on the subject called Come Out, Come Out, my first feature. Uh, that came about because at that time I was a student directing at Minor Latham, and one night an elderly gentleman came after a performance and asked if I had considered a theater, theater career. And uh, with the uh, smugness of an 18 year old, I said, No one goes to the theater anymore. <laughs> I want to make films. And he turned out to be a famed composer, Richard Rogers. <laughs> So, my brother Marty recently found an old relic I'd long forgotten. It's a copy of a check from Richard Rogers for $2,500 to make Come Out, Come Out. And with it, a lovely note, hoping that it would lead to a long and successful career. I think you made a good investment. Well, I think it's also no accident that today, June 1, is Marilyn Monroe's birthday. We all were so aware of her vulnerability when we were growing up, and we knew how she was exploited. Marilyn learned to be taken seriously, and she so wanted to be educated. She used to sneak into classes at UCLA. We can only wonder what her life might have been if, and what she might have become as she had the opportunity for an education that we were all here so privileged to have. I just want to end with the way that my life has been. It feels like it's been so intertwined, my life and my art. So I'm going to end with a quote from a script that I wrote when I was 31 which is now, ironically, being made into a major motion picture. <laughs> Another of life's surprises. I'll give you the setup. In it, uh, a successful woman, a pioneering woman, really, in her career, goes back to an elite women's college. <laughs> and here's what she has to say. Oh, by the way, I left out an important thing. Uh, I wrote her as old. She was 56 at the time. <laughs> It's been a long time. The women I saw back then had so much to look forward to and to contribute. They still do fight to make that contribution. It won't be easy, I can promise you. But it will be worth it, I promise you. Sometimes your choices will be limited. Not by yourself, but by others. Be persistent. Be fierce. And if you have the courage and the audacity to believe, you will achieve your goals. I believe the best is ahead for all of us. Thank you.